Closing argument is that moment at trial where we bring together the law, the facts, and the morality of what has happened to persuade the jury that our cause is just and we should prevail. You'll remember in case analysis, we talked about identifying those questions that first popped into your mind when you began to represent this particular client. And I told you to write those questions down and set them aside. You've got to go back and look at them before you begin your closing argument. You've got to look at them and see, did I answer the questions that came to me when I read this case as a human being? Once you are sure that you've done that, you're ready to begin to fashion the argument that lets the jury see how you have answered those questions. So how do we do it? Well, the purpose is to harmonize the evidence that has been heard at trial with the law that must be applied. And we do that through the lens of the theory of our case. We're completing the story. We're keeping the promise that we made an opening statement. And we we're persuading the fact finder that our client's cause is just and we should prevail. In order for our closing arguments to be effective, they need to be conversational in tone. We've got to engage the jury members in a discussion of the evidence of what it means. So a logical structure and believability are key. And believability does not come solely from your credibility as an attorney. It comes from the details that you've presented in the case, the details that just make sense. And you need those details because without those details, you cannot effectively explain to the jury why you should prevail. So I'm looking for the proper tone. I'm looking for the right kind of engagement. And I can get that by organizing the information that I've presented throughout the trial. Now, you remember earlier, I talked about the use of the rule of threes and how I could take the rule of threes to combine closing argument, case in chief, and opening statement. I've also got to use the rule of threes to bring together into harmony the law, the facts, and the morality of the case. Now, you're never going to have a case where all three of those categories are strong in the same way for your side. You've got to find the piece that is strongest for you. And you've got to have enough of the other to make it past uh, an objection or a motion. But picking the right theme is so crucial in closing argument because they've got to believe you. The words that I use must empower the jury to decide the case in my favor. I meld the facts and the law of the case and I cast them in a moral light, uh, a question of right or wrong. And you always want the jury to feel like if they pick your side, they are on the side of the greater good. They're doing something that's important for society, that's important for the world. And you should never demand that the jury do anything other than what you've asked. You should present to the jury the facts and the law in the way that compels them to do what you've asked them to do. The closing is really an organic expression of what you have already shown to be true. What you've shown to be true through jury selection, through the direct examination of witnesses, through the cross-examination of opposing witnesses, and the motions that you have won, and the instructions that you know the jury is going to give. And it comes from you in a way that is believable to the jury, and it is tied to your personality and your sense of what the case is truly about. Now, you can use your physicality, your presence in the room, to maximize your own unique individual persuasive ability. There are certain fundamental things that as human beings we look for. We look for eye contact. We look for that ability to look another human being in the eye and let them know that we're speaking the truth, that we don't have anything to hide here, and that we are in that moment being truthful to them. We also want to move, but we move with a purpose. 
If you practice in a jurisdiction where the judge allows you to move in the courtroom while examining witnesses and doesn't force you to stand by the lectern, go to that same spot that you stood when you questioned a witness and then turn to the jury on closing argument and say, members of the jury, you remember, I stood right here. That tying of the physical to the moment previous gives additional weight and credibility to your closing argument. It is really an issue of you presenting yourself in a way that makes you believable, not just from the substance of what you're saying, but the manner in which you say it. So how do I make myself persuasive uh, from a language perspective? I've talked about presentation of tone, I've talked about engagement, I've talked about logical progression of the argument that you make, I've talked about uh, letting your emotion in when it's appropriate. But what uh, substantive structural things from a language perspective? Well, there are some that are well recognized, both historically and currently. One is the rule of threes, arranging things in trilogies so that they're persuasive, so that they're acceptable uh, to members of the jury. Another one is to use lines of parallel thought. And this is very effective when you've got two witnesses who have said different things, and you compare them one to the other as you go through your closing argument, bringing in issues of credibility to explain to the jury which one they should believe. And then finally, I use repetition where appropriate because repetition is part of our oral story telling tradition. It's part of how we have learned from our family, from our teachers, from our friends. We are intrinsically a storytelling species. And so when I harness the power of story, when I harness the power of repetition in the appropriate way in the closing argument, I become persuasive. And that's nothing more than the use of language to enhance the retention of the facts that you think are most important to the jury. If you do what I've suggested here today, if you use primacy and recency, if you keep your theme and theory in your closing argument, if you organize and argue it from a proof perspective of using what the other side has said and identifying those undisputed facts, you will establish the legal sufficiency of your case, but more importantly, you will establish the moral superiority of your case. And that's where you bring the jury to your side. That's when they go out laughing and they come in smiling. But they're laughing at what you've done and they're smiling because they've decided to go your way. And that's how a closing argument goes from being good to being great. Try it. I think you'll be pleased.